Due to the short semester, we did not have the bearing assembly ECO to incorporate changes. And a lot of times you're going to start out with parts already modeled. You had to figure out how the parts should be changed. And so there's a methodology through in going through the model to find out how the parts are modeled. So an engineering change order is the same as a change order in civil or architecture. It, it's after the drawing has been signed off and things are already being built. And so this is very important. When I was at a certain company, we had a different product put in our certain product. The change description would be here and every ECO will have a particular EC number. So you know how we have a lease in our revision history block. The engineering change order ECO number would go in where initial is and what is the revision level A, B, C, D, F, G. We always skip I, O, and Q. Now we're in numeric revisions until we release for manufacturing of tools for that, for that part. Uh, tooling is what's so expensive to change. It's not necessarily the part. If I, I was an engineer at that company and so well, I would be the requester because I saw something that needed to change. So this could come from, it could come from uh, you're finding something wrong on a drawing. The date submitted, the priority, the status, and the date closed, which means that it's incorporated. The reason for the change is kind of like the change description. The change description is pretty quick. But the reason for the change tells um, essentially why we're changing that. And then we're going to say, how does it impact everything that we've already done? So I'm going to zoom in here. The disposition of parts, we have some already on order. What are we going to do with those? Use, rework, return to vendor, or are we going to have to scrap them? Rework, return to vendor. Um, I'm sorry, rework is expensive, but scrapping is the most expensive thing. Returning to vendor means that we might have bought that from a vendor and we can return that. How many do we have in inventory? What are we going to do with that? What about work in progress? Parts being made right now. Are we going to start those and back those up? What about finished goods on the shelf that have not been sold yet? Are we going to take them off the shelves? In the field means that it's being used by a customer and we're going to have to sometimes go out and retrofit these changes in the field if it is a functional change or a safety hazard. And then customer returns is, is sometimes one of the biggest things. If a customer returns something, that is a dissatisfaction thing and that takes a lot more time to gain that customer's trust that we're going to make it right. So what is it going to affect? FCC approval, CE certification. So these are certifications. They could be electronic. They could be safety. Um, there are different certification levels that you have to go through with different parts. Is it going to affect software? That doesn't mean our database. That means software driving the whole system. Is it going to affect the schematic or the Gerber data for the printed circuit board? or the drawing, and ours would affect the drawing. So we're going to say yes or no to that. So who sits around and decides all this? It's called a change control board, a CCB. And the change control board is, at this company, comprised of this, the senior manager of the entire company, the quality manager, the VP of engineering, the vice president of engineering, the engineering manager, the operations manager, and the change control board chairman. So the change control board chairman brings all this to light. Everybody discusses it, decides the disposition of the parts, and sometimes that, that decides how much a change order is going to cost. Some changes could cost $800 in time and effort. Some can cost up to $8,000. $10,000 of change order. So this is where your precision of your drawings, when you initially release it, when it's finally released to the vendor, we're regularly going to change that to a revision A to release for manufacturing. Right now we're at release one. It's the first time we've drawn it. 
we may still be in the prototype phase, and that's where in, we're in numeric provisions when we release to the manufacturer and to make the tooling to mass produce, that's when we go to revisions of alpha number or letters. The changes are really odd. It shows a from to effect sometimes. It doesn't tell you what changes. You have to look and see the differences in the from and the to and make those changes. Now it can affect parts and it can affect only drawing. So we're going to have to look at that. As far as the flow of ECOs, if the change, the first is the change is requested. Does it have an external reference like AutoCAD might with a, with a controlled uh, document that's embedded in it? So that would have also have to bump revision. Create a working copy of the drawing with the engineering change incorporated on it and it's stamped work in progress. Now we're going to revise that drawing and do changes need to be made to the drawing, then we're going to go this way. If not, we're going to go around and go to the other direction. So you're going to revise the drawing, then the print will go for checking. And notice that they have stamps and different colors of the paper to delineate when something is final or when it's in progress or when it it is being and that way it kind of that's why it says pinks that might be a pink piece of paper printed on pink paper then they're going to issue once everything is good now you might incorporate the change and the checker finds something it's going to come right back to you to make that adjustment you don't want to you want to be as thorough as possible a checker is someone that knows GD&T, that knows documentation, knows the ASME standard. And they're going to be checking that the incorporation is made correctly and also that the drawing is up to the ASME standard. If you find anything, any other little grammatical things, then that can be changed. There are functional, functional things that need to be changed, need an engineering change order. At some companies, they would let ECOs stack up until you had four or five to incorporate. And then you would incorporate all those at once. And that's what scenario we're going into. Now, normally you don't make a drawing and then make e engineering change orders right away. But this is an exercise. Usually you're going to make a drawing. It's going to be released. If there's anything that's found with trouble in it, such as an error on your drawing that nobody caught. That's why the pressure is on the checker. They're going to check it even at initial release. So we're going to issue the originator, checkers, and reviewers with markups and enter it into a checklist. If the changes are correct, then it's going to go to the approvers with markups. If the drawing is approved, then the work in progress stamp is removed from that drawing. It means that we cannot be using this drawing right now because there's work being made to it. So that would be uh, left on there until the changes are done. And then that will be removed, and the checker and approver's initials would be put on the drawing. Then an email will be sent to the project engineer or product engineer, the CAD work coordinator, the checker and approver, and then they're going to send that new document to whoever's making those parts or the machines to make those parts so that they can make adjustments to their tooling. And this is where things get really expensive. You want to catch your errors in the design phase. That's the cheapest way. If it causes a safety issue out in the field, that's the most expensive thing because it can actually fall into lawsuits. So we're going to go to our first ECO. And I'm going to pull this up right here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where is it? We're going to go to our first ECO. And that's not pulled up here because this is from the other one. So what I'm going to do is pull this up over here on this screen. So notice that this is Rev A. 
And Rev A is what you would start off after all your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all your prototype phases may be documented that way. Just, and you could put in your drawing. So let me show you your drawing. You could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and you can put in just notes of what changed. It needs no approval in the prototype phase. However, in a, in a real drawing, an engineer is responsible for the documentation. They depend on the checker. They depend on the, on the designer and the drafter. So it goes drafter, designer, checker. And the designer may be um, checking all this stuff. But they're not responsible for the documentation. That's a legal thing, and that has to be put on the engineer. You don't have to have a professional engineer's license to be able to sign off on this. So when if we had seven numbers on here, one through seven on revisions, we're going to delete everything when we get to release for tooling and we're releasing for tooling with a revision ECO that makes a change to our drawing. So I'm going to update all these sheets and save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave number one initial release on here. But we're going to look at the ECO and we're going to see what changes need to be made. Is it on the drawing or is it on the entire on a part or part and drawing? So let me drag this down here a little bit. And let's look at this real quick. So what do you see changing? If, if you see dimensions on here and there are no changes to those dimensions, leave them alone. All you're going to change is what you see. So in Rev A sheet 104, it says apply tolerance of position to the 1032 UNF whole pattern. So we're going to put a feature control frame right here. And I wish I brought this up in something else, but we'll have a feature control frame by those holes. If we have a feature control frame, we have to have datums A and B put on this. Now we have a diameter of two that's datum B and a plane that's datum A. So this means the center axis that, that is located about because this is positional tolerance. Anything that has anything to do with position, since this is our tolerance of location now, we're going to put basic boxes around those dimensions so that it says, don't use the tolerances in the tolerance box. Look for the feature control frame for your cylindrical tolerance zone. They're going to be basically located perfectly at these three points. So that's what's going to change first for um, the on sheet one for our base. So let's go and make this change. Now you don't need to um, save this off as initial release and and turn it in as two different or three different drawings. You're going to incorporate this and turn it all in at the same time. We have 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue incorporating these changes so that you have 100% of all the videos that you need for this assignment due next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, so that you can work on this over the weekend. And you want to knock this out as soon as possible. So I'm going to go down to sheet two here, which is where the body is. And I'm going to come right down here to this. So this has to turn to a basic dimension. Go to precision and tolerance and make it basic. So over here, I've got that checked off that that's done. The diameter 1.500 changes to basic as well. That's done. Now let's put in our datums. The front face of this, where these holes connect to another part, is our datum. So I could put it here, or I could put it up in this top view. So I'm going to put in here a datum A, and I could put it on this extension line if I want. Just to, not at the end of an arrowhead, you guys. So here's datum A. Datum B is the axis of this diameter of two. And that is right here. So how could I put that on here? I would put that right at the end of this dimension. 
And this is going to be datum B. And that means the axis when it's right on the inch end of a feature of size. Now, I don't want that crossing if I can have that not crossing. So I'm going to move this down a little bit and I'm going to move this view up. Now I can drag this angle down a bit and not have that crossing. I have my datums in here. And I'm going to bring this back a bit because this is showing all these sheets for some reason. And, um, and now we need our feature control frame by the 1032 hole right here. So I'm going to go to a feature control frame. And I'm going to allow that to snap to the bottom side of this. And I'm going to zoom in here. There is a green box right here. And if you drag this out and right click and continue, it should snap to it. So our diametric tolerance zone, don't forget your diameter. That's two points off is 28 thousandths. And that is the same as plus minus 0 0.010. And that would be the same thing if we were using a plus minus tolerance. And that is no MMC on that because this is a threaded hole. And you can see that I put a little white circle around that because somebody erroneously put that on there. We don't have tolerances of a plus minus on a threaded hole. So we can never have MMC. This is to datum A and datum B. So I'm going to drag this up a little bit and you can see that that was connected there so it moved with it so this arrow didn't look like it had anything to do with this so now that's incorporated sheet one is incorporated so I'm going to save this and now we're going to go to sheet two and we're going to look at this so at apply tolerance position to the retainer to facilitate assembly of parts it also when we have an MMC modifier, it gives us a bonus tolerance and, and that gives us 57% more tolerance zone that it would still work. The reason that we can use this on this hole is because this is a clearance hole. Now, datum A could be the front or the back of this plate because it, it, you can flip it around. Datum B is the center axis of this uh, cylinder because these are concentric with that and they want to be fashioned around that with our bolt circle. Now do you see anything else that changed? The only other thing I see is a 0.255. Our hole has changed from a 0.203 to a 255. You want to check that all dimensions are the same so that changes in the part so this changes not only in the drawing, but in the part. And I'm going to minimize this down a little bit. We're going to go to the sheet that has our retainer in it. And that is sheet four. Now, do you see our diameter point 203? This changes to a 255. So since I retrieved the model annotations of this, if I click on this and right click, I can edit the model dimension. And the whole diameter can be changed to a 255. And it says, hey, we need to update the assembly and the IPN. Just say OK. Now the whole changes, the size of the whole change. It's going to want to save the part, the assembly, and the IPN when I save this because I've changed a part in it. So I've changed that part size of those holes, and let's drag this over a little bit. So that's done. But we need um, basic dimensions on the location of those holes. So I'm going to double-click on this and make this basic, and I'm going to double-click on this and make it basic. So you can see that there's a reason that I didn't put equally spaced on this. And if you did, you would have to take that off the, the note for the hole and put in the angular dimension. So we have both of our dimensions locating these holes, basic. We're going to put in our datums, datum A. 
can either be on the back side or the front side of the part. Does not matter because this part can be flipped. Datum B is the center axis of the diameter of two. So I can either select the top or the bottom. And I'm going to do this again because it's snagged on that. So I want to grab that endpoint. And this is going to be datum B. Remember that we can't have two datums with the same name. I'm going to pull this up a little bit and over. Now we need our feature control frame, not above, but below. We never put a feature control frame above. It can be out to the side or it can be below it. If it's a combination hole, such as a counterbore or countersink, it has to be by the through hole. That's the most important one. It connects to something else. So let's go to our feature control frame. <clears throat> and I'm just going to come out to the side of this if I want to, or I could come down below it. So let's go out to the side, right click and continue. And this has a diameter of 0.028, but we have a maximum material condition. So if this hole gets bigger, it can move more. That's our bonus tolerance. So that's something that Doug Smith wants you guys to know about. If you have a drawing in your portfolio, you want to know what that means. Maximum material condition or least material condition. Any modifier in here has a bonus tolerance. So now we have our datum A. We have the hole size changed. We have two basic dimensions. Just zoom out to look at them. And then we have our feature control frame, datum B. And you see this weird little anomaly that happens sometimes. Just move that up and down, and that'll go away. And it went away on that one, too. And either side could be data A, either the inside or the outside plane. So now we've got that done. And notice that sheet one wants to update. I'm going to double click on sheet one. And it updated the whole sizes. So now we can save that drawing. It saved the retainer, the drawing, and the IPN, and say OK. Now, if it saved the part and there was no problem in the assembly, it won't have to change the assembly, too. So just allow Inventor to know what to save. We're going to go to the third sheet here. This is four sheets. And the third sheet does something for us here. It looks like these numbers are the same. Datum C is the axis of the 2x diameter 0.56 right here. And then we have datum B is the plane that the 0.472 starts from to locate the first hole. And datum A is the perpendicular plane that we've cut right here that the holes start on. And then we have, once again, no MMC modifier on 0.028. Located perpendicular to A, located to B horizontally, and centered around C on its axis. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. We're at 5 o'clock, and I'm going to continue this until this is finished. Then I'm going to incorporate Rev B. Rev B does not change parts. It only changes the drawing. Now, the last thing that we'll be doing is putting revision history on sheet one. So don't forget that. It's very important to do that. So if you guys need to bug out, I get that. But I'm going to continue with this so that you guys will have all the videos that you need to completely finish this project. All right. So we're going to apply. It says apply tolerance of position to the 440 UNC holes. Now I'm going to go to the shaft, which is on sheet two. Let me see, sheet three. You can see the shaft is on that. And I'm going to, let's put the datums in first. So I want to put datum C here right on this diameter 0.56. Right at the end of the arrowhead, this will be datum C. Datum A is this plane, and a lot of people get really worried that this is going to be odd. Now, you can put it on the extension of this 0.31, or you can put it on this plane. It doesn't matter if the cutting plane is crossing it. That's datum A. 
Datum B, I'm going to put up here where these dimensions come from. And I'm going to put it on, um, on this line. And then I'm going to move it up. You can't just grab somewhere there and move it up before you put it in. So I'm going to make this datum B. And then I'm going to drag it. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to drag it by the endpoint, and it gets me a little bit of an offset there. So we have A, B, and C in here, and this one has that weird little anomaly thing. Move it up and down, and we have our datums in here. Now I'm going to make this basic. that locates the hole because this is position and then another one that's basic and notice that it's located on datum C which is the center axis of these two um, diameters. Now I'm going to put the feature control frame on here right click continue it's a diameter of 0.028 with no MMC modifier, so just backspace that out to A, B, and C. So we had our diametric tolerance zone. If you start out with your very first one, you forget that. It's, going to re it's just going to try and repeat that, so remember to put your diameter in all three of those so far. So that looks good. And I'm going to save this. We haven't changed any parts, so it doesn't try and change anything else. We're at sheets three of four here for Rev A. So I'm going to go right here. And do you see here that this whole size changes to a diameter of 177? So we're going to change a part. We're going to make the location of this basic. And datum B is the center axis of this ellipse. So when you have a basic dimension and it's symmetric, it's, it's going to be located equidistantly about B. And then datum A is either side of the plane. This has an MMC modifier because this is a clearance hole for a threaded screw to fall through. So we've got to change the part here. And I think I used a hole and thread call out on that. So I may delete that and retrieve it so that I can just change it from the model. So let's go to the part with the plate in it. And that is, what sheet is that? Sheet two. So datum B doesn't have a diameter. Datum A is either side of this plane. So I'm going to put in my datum B right here. B. And datum A could be either side of this plate. Now, we're going to make this dimension is the only one that needs to be basic. It's the only one that's locating it because they are centered on the center axis horizontally of datum B. So this needs to be made basic. Now, these holes right here, I think I used a hole and thread call out. So do you see that it says edit hole note? So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to retrieve that model dimension. It's not a threaded hole, so I don't mind doing that. I'm going to drag this one up. I'm going to select that and say OK. And I'm going to drag it up out here. Now I'm going to right click on this and go to precision and make this three places. So right now it's 125. We need to change it to 177. So I'm going to right click on that and edit the model dimension now that we retrieved it from the model to a 177. It says it's going to want to change the assembly and that's fine. Now I'm going to put my, my uh, feature control frame. Let's put it out to the side of this one because of this, this leader here. So feature control frame. I'm going to select on the green dot, right click, and continue. And that's 0.028. I'm going to put an MMC modifier back in here.
to datums A and B, and we have no third datum. And remember, this is 1x because of the symmetry line. So this applies to both holes the same way. So now I'm going to save this and let it save everything about that, that, that it's going to have a problem with. Now, do you see the ECO number here? You can actually copy this and paste it in our revision history block. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go to sheet one. And we're going to have revisions A and B on all sheets. So I'm going to go to sheet one, and I'm going to double click on this. In order to add another row, we're going to right click and insert a row. This is going to be leave the zone, oh, leave that blank because it tells in what zone these changes are, and it will be multiple sheets, multiple zones. So in description, I'm going to say incorporate INC per ECO space control V to pop that ECO number in. The day that I incorporate may be different than the origination date. So I'm going to put today's date in here, and you can put the same day if you want to. And I'm going to say, OK. Now I've got this one, but it didn't put my rev. I didn't put rev A in here, so I need to do that. And I hit the caps lock instead of A. So there's rev A. We incorporated for this ECO on this date. And you don't put anything in approved. That's for whoever has checked it and approved it in the end. Don't put my name. Don't put anything. All right, now something else that's going to change on this. When you incorporate ECOs, it says down here revised by. So I have to edit this on all four sheets, and you only have to do it once. So I'm going to have my initials here and down here. So I'm going to go to, you notice that this wants to be updated. You can right click and say update model, and that has been up, updated in that view. So you want to make sure that all the views, nothing has a lightning bolt on it. Right click and update model if that's showing. So I'm going to go into the title block and edit the field text inside here. It does not say revised by, and this is a problem. So um, if you guys have this same sheet, which I'm sure you do, we're going to have to edit the definition of the title block. And I apologize for this. This should have been done. We're going to put, we're going to copy this down here. And we're going to paste it because we want the same size text. Now I'm going to drag this down here. So I'm going to double click on this text and I'm going to type in revised by. And that's going to be the prompt in my title block when I edit the field text. Notice that that's prompted entry. Now you're not going to put your initials in here. Don't do that because it does it in your entire template. And yes, I'm going to save the edits. So now it brings this up. I'm going to put my initials in here on sheet one. And I'm going to save that. I have to do this on all sheets. So sheet two. All I did was double click on sheet two. And it wanted me to do that as well. That's weird. Double click on sheet three. This is the first time I've done this, and it's pretty cool. It goes sheet three, make sure it's filled that in, double click on sheet four. So when we add prompted text and we change to that, it wants us to fill everything in in the entire toddle block. So that actually turned out to be a good thing for us. So let's just make sure that the initials are on all four sheets. And in the next video, we're going to incorporate Rev B, which is way quicker.